Okay, that took like what feels like an hour, but we we did it. We beat all the rare bears. That was just a marathon of smashing bears. I, I eventually got it down to a pretty good strategy. So essentially, Omori had one job. His job was, well, two jobs. Two jobs, his job one was to mock. And job two was to juice and heal people. So that was his entire life, is just juicing people up, occasionally getting a hit in when no one was too in need of, of snacks or treats. Aubrey spent the entire time countering. Like, I literally just, her job was to stand there and tank all of the hits all day long. Hero was just fast food, fast food all the time, and then getting a hit in if it looked like they didn't need any healing. And Kel, I gave him um, Flex and Ricochet to be our like damage dealer. So I also changed his equipment up a little bit. So I ended up giving Kel a daisy because all of the rare bears were angry so if it's it starts him out happy and it gave him a little bit of extra health which he didn't really need when Aubrey was tanking but I thought it might be useful just in case but I gave him I gave him the daisy so that he would be happy so that he would deal extra damage and I just had him standing there flexing and either ricocheting or just hitting them if he was re waiting for a heal from Omori and I just repeated that for like 10 <laughs> bears we started this at level 17 everyone is level 19 now with the exception of Kel we got a jack we got a combo meal we got some more jam packets another combo meal a foxtail and some more jam packets foxtail might be interesting I'm gonna guess that's a charm Speed increases with more energy. Interesting. That... You know what? I am trying to make him the fastest boy. And he, he will be fast. He is the fastest boy. You're just bubble wrapped for safety. You probably could use more speed because right now you are so slow, but honestly, I don't think anything's gonna help you. And we got fast food now, so your healing is better. So, okay, we somehow did that. I'm gonna go save again. I think easiest thing to do will just be to head into Sweetheart's place. Kidding me, right? I don't have the health to fight you right now. Please leave me alone. Oh, you come back. Nope. <laughs> Nothing to do with that, please. Alrighty, so. As I recall, down here, we can both break all the things. Because I lost so many healing items as a result of that fight. I don't even know if it was worth it in the end. Just breaking, breaking, breaking. Okay. Did you have any luck with that painting yet? Are you still working? Please return after some more adventuring. After all, greatness takes time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you won't disappoint us. Calm down, Rococo. The type of furniture, isn't it? Or is it an art museum? I don't remember. You hear the word all the time, but I don't have any meaning ascribed to it. Alrighty, step one, pickles. Eat the pickles. Great. Step two, smuggler jash. Don't want any more tofu. We're fine on jacks. And we get a couple more chicken wings. Let's get 
some sodas. And let's get some more mango smoothies. I think we're still good on life jam. It should be fine for now. The real issue is now we have to deal with the de deep, dark pit of dis depression and despair. Which, to be frank, I don't really want to go deal with. I um, don't- I avoid dealing it with- I can't even talk about it. See, that's the real problem. It's, it's so dramatic, I can't talk about it. But I can save. Because there's no way I am redoing that shit. God, no. Alrighty. I do think we need to be Omori for this, though. The uh, bad stuff always revolves around Omori. Music stops, and the horror sets in, and the dread... It's a long way down. Do you want to jump? Yeah. Am I going to wake up in reality? Am I going to be in some deep, dark pit? Is this how you get to the upside down? Oh no. Oh, I'm falling faster than my friends. They're drifting away from me. this I don't know where I am oh but these are the the white egret orchids that his mother had my thoughts will follow you into your dreams oh, no. oh basil there's a book up here you find a book of interest. Read an excerpt. One by one, they fell asleep on the car ride home. It was a long day at the beach, after all, and everyone was exhausted. Blank was the first to nod off, then the rest. As the sun set over the freeway, Blank's head actually accidentally dropped onto Blank's shoulder. The sudden jolt wakes him, but he doesn't dare open his eyes. He pretends to be asleep and steadies his breathing. He listens to the sound of the road. He feels the soft sun resting on his skin and the slight tinge of pain on his nose from tomorrow's sunburn. He is happy. Very, very happy. And he makes a vow to himself that no matter what, he will remember this moment forever. Oh no. Oh, Basie. Happened. Like, I know Mari died, but how and why and... Um, mountains of books, but the keepers of this library have long since passed. It's just overcome with spider webs and forgotten emotions and stories. Got another one. Find a book of interest. A puddle of juice sinks into the carpet. Hovering above it is none other than Blank, Kel, holding an open juice box. He looks around at his friends, who are all wearing the same face of disappointment. He lets out a guilty chuckle. In what seems like less than a second, Kel disappears out the front door. A tiny black kitten makes her way through the stain, leaving sloppy wet tracks all across the carpet. Uh, hero? His face turns red and yells for Kel, but Kel is already long gone. Hero hands Mari some wet paper towels. It looks like they're the only adults here, and if they don't clean this up soon, the carpet is going to stain. I'll have to deal with Kel later. I'm trying to piece together the memories based on people that, that Basil's kind of tried to cut out of his life because it's just too painful to deal with, especially now that he's losing someone else when he just got him back. You find a book of interest. This year, Blank was lucky and I was lucky enough to get assigned to a desk next to the small window. 
Every day during class, I would gaze listlessly through the opening, at the shadows of the trees, the clouds creeping overhead. His mind drifted elsewhere, into his own worlds, his own stories, his own adventures. He had a habit of doing this. It was easy for him to get lost. Today was the same as any other. I stared vacantly out the small window as the clouds passed one by one. Suddenly, a hand playfully slaps his back, snapping him out of his revere. Reverie. I looks away from the opening. I'm not sure if it's I, but I, I feel like it is. Kel smiles. He motions that class is over and that it's finally time for lunch. It's pizza day today, and they need to bolt to the cafeteria before it's all gone. His stomach growls. He looks at the small window one last time. He would have to continue his adventure another day. So, I think then, up here, this one fell asleep in the car ride. So, Kel nodded up first, and his head, Basil's head, drops onto Aubrey's shoulder. He wakes up, but he doesn't open his eyes. He steadies his breathing and tries to listen to the sound of the road. And he wants to remember that moment forever. But Aubrey ends up eventually becoming like one of his biggest bullies, which would very much destroy like the sweet moments they had together. Another book of interest. It was a hot summer day, and all I could think about was why they couldn't do this tomorrow. The backyard was a mess. Planks of wood were strewn about the area. Paint stage blotched the grass, thanks to Omori and Aubrey's work. All day, I watched either Hero or Kel lug planks of wood. Probably watched, watched Hero lug planks of wood back and forth from his dad's pickup. He watched Kel hammer his fingers over and over and, noted, and made note that over an hour has passed since... Mari had, has climbed down her ladder. I will just be their moral support, he thought, as he sat sleepily in the shade of his favorite three tree. Of course he knew this wouldn't be the case. Soon his friends will be asking for help and he won't be able to refuse. The treehouse is for everyone, so it's only fair that everyone puts some work into it. He knows this and agrees, but reluctantly. He slides up and wobbles his way to the mess. He knows he should put in his fair share. It just had to be on the hottest day of summer. Interesting. My apartment wants to see if that treehouse is still there. It's so sad and overgrown, and this piano music is killing me. Another book of interest. It's sunset. A strange statue watches over the hidden lake. It might have meant something significant in the past, but time has made its engravings illegible. Either way, it doesn't matter to the company visiting it today. They're only here to use it as a diving board. The brothers take turns jumping off the statue. Hero jumps first, then Kel, then Hero again, then Kel again. The brothers gleefully urge me to join them. And after some careful thought, he, war he warily agrees. He shuffles up to the statue. Up, he shuffles up the statue and looks down at the moving water. He can hear his heartbeat. His ears begin to ring. His legs feel as if they would give out at any time. He tries to focus on his breathing. He feels something crawling on his shoulder, and his eyes fly open to meet with those of a black spider. In an instant, he loses all sense and hurls himself into the lake. Water fills his nose. He exerts his limbs, but the water is stronger. He is too weak, too helpless. Or that is what he believes. He shuts his eyes and waits for the brothers to save him. So it sounds like to begin with, Basil was dealing... I mean, it, it he, he definitely appears to have been dealing with a lot of anxiety. And wanting to fit in and wanting to be a part of things, but not necessarily being able to keep up. Or having the mental fortitude to keep up with his friends. Got the letter L. Are you another part of the hangman? I feel like you aren't. Six keys left. You open the door. I don't know. The puzzle says welcome to black space. Part of the shelf has been cleared out. There's a hole here. Look into the hole. Yep. Bees 
Hazel! Crap, should I have gone the other way first? I didn't get to read the last book. Oh, shit. He's haunted by the same monster I am. Don't forget it's in the toy box. No, there's one more book I need to read. No! Crap. Crap. No, 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 no. I'm not waiting for something to happen. Oh, crap. The light bulb looks angrier. Okay. Um, hold on for one second, because I need to go back, and um, I need to, to see what's in the last book. I'm sorry. We're just going to jump cut away real quick. It's going to be fine. It's gonna be fine. What the heck? And that was Mari. Oh crap, okay. I was just running through this and, and reading through all of the books again, just to, you know, just in case I needed to like trigger all of them for something to happen because you know, I'm just paranoid like that. But straight up, I went down a side staircase instead of the middle staircase and it was just Mari's ghost. Just the ghost of Mari. Haunting us all. Okay. Okay. I just want them to be happy again. But reality isn't that easy. to deal with when you go through childhood trauma aren't something that you can just get over with a hug and a well-wishing. Not fears, not PTSD, not phobias, not anxieties, they're stuff. Because brains are stupid. You know, brains are so stupid. They're incredibly smart, but one little thing gets miswired or it, one little neurotransmitter isn't produced enough and, and you're screwed. All right, this is the last book. You find a book of interest. Read an excerpt. Yes. Everyone is over again today. The special occasion is Saturday morning. From 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., a group of six friends eat a delicious homemade, homemade breakfast and watch TV together. It's the most enjoyable part of every week. He looks at the clock. 8 a.m., two hours left. He would be able to watch with everyone else until 10 a.m. When his tutor arrives. arrives, he grimaces. What he thought would be a rewarding hobby has been nothing more than a nuisance. Instead of watching the shows with the rest of his friends, he'll be the only one to miss out. If only he could watch the last hour with everyone else. If only he didn't have to play the violin. Something opened. Not yet, Lo not yet, Al. did need to read all the books. I'm not just paranoid. There's always a reason. But what opened where?
Oh. Hi. You're just a pair of red eyes. Watching me from the bookcase. Kinda wish I hadn't seen that. It's weird, I don't see what opened. I can pick up the L, and I know the bookcase will open. But where is the actual something that opened? Six keys left, but there's something else here. Oh, into the light? Oh, oh, it must be this. Oh, Basil. -y. Oh, the shadow of Basil. <sighs> piano. A grand piano. The word Omori is etched across the center. Lady Red Orchid. I have some delicious fruits. Would you like to eat some? Sure. I feel better. Do I really? Yeah. I'll save. Lost library. The wall feels hollow here. Can I go through it? I ideally, that's what I'd like to do. But I'm probably just gonna have to go back through where the letter was, aren't I? All that's really left to do is go through the whole way where the L is. Don't. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help him. Is there a good ending? Is there a bad ending? Am I going to ruin their lives or am I actually going to be able to help them? forget it's in the toy box what toy box where whose ah and i bet you anything the only thing i could really do is stab myself again and and go back into freaking uh, the, the real world okay so the letters i need to find still are among the other O's, so helpful by spending time with a frog it, in the gut of a whale in a large bubbly tank within a live shell and in a water closet. Great. Well, taking a quick tour around the scenery just to make sure I'm not missing anything important. Not that the stupid hands ever could catch me. There's only one thing left to do. We're gonna stab ourselves. When we wake up, we'll be back in the real world. And no longer in the land of our dreams. Thank you guys so much for watching. There was a lot deeper episode than the usual cutesy headspace ones. We got two days left until we move. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.